What's the first thing that comes into your mind when I say the word disabled? If you thought of a person in a wheelchair, you're not alone. Research shows that most people think the very same thing. And I don't blame you. Just look at the very symbol for disabilities. It's a person in a wheelchair. Would it surprise you, however, to know that 70% of all disabilities are invisible? Yes, disabilities include physical and motor disabilities, blindness, low vision, deafness, and hard of hearing, but they also include dyslexia, dyspraxia, ADD, ADHD, bipolar disorder, autism spectrum disorder, anxiety, depression, cancer, HIV and AIDS, addiction, and the list goes on. A disability in the legal sense is a long-term or reoccurring physical, mental, sensory or intellectual impairment that has barriers because of these impairments. Now, maybe you heard that list and are questioning whether or not you or somebody you know might actually be classified as being disabled. Is that hard for you to accept? You see, the immediate assumption of a person with a disability is that they are less than, lacking. What won't he be able to do that I'll have to do for him? Or what accommodations is she going to need? Or on the other side of the spectrum, we have our inspiration porn. Wow, you are so amazing for being able to do that with a disability. Won't you come and give a motivational talk to our staff? Or please, can I write an article about you and your disability? Can we all just stop for a moment and think of all the times that we could have potentially been temporarily disabled? Think of the time that you got a cold and you lost your voice and ultimately your ability to communicate. All that time that you tried to relive your youth and you broke your ankle on a trampoline and were on crutches for six weeks. Or how about the time that you lost a family member and the grief alone prevented you from being able to think, speak, or act rationally. Now those might not be a disability in the legal sense because they aren't long-term or reoccurring, but they definitely disabled you. I was diagnosed with neurodiverse disabilities at the age of nine. My disabilities are one of those invisible ones. I was so fortunate to have attended an inclusive school growing up. I never felt disabled until we moved countries and I quickly learned that disability inclusion and accessibility was not a priority everywhere in the world. Worldwide, 51% of children have completed primary school education. And in developing countries such as South Africa, that number drops down to a mere 30%. This is filtered into unemployability, where it's estimated that 80 to 90% of people with disabilities of working age are unemployed. And in South Africa, employees with disabilities make up only 1% of the workforce. This is largely believed to be because of attitudinal and societal barriers, which means that it's our attitudes and our assumptions of disabilities that are preventing people with disabilities from being included into society. The term disabled carries such a deep-rooted stigmatization, and as a result, I have personally chosen not to tick the I have a disability box out of a pure fear for the labels that are attached to my disclosure. When I moved to South Africa, we really battled to find a school that understood my specific needs. We ended up moving schools after only three months because I was told, we don't know how to cope with your disability. This was the first time that I experienced and I learned that sometimes disclosing my disability meant that I was going to be rejected before I even began. I wanted more than anything to be normal. I wanted more than anything to fit in. I couldn't understand why my peers learnt differently and why I saw things differently and why they could do things that I couldn't. 
after years of grappling with this and trying very hard to remove this identity from myself, remove disabilities from myself and try and fit into this box of normal, I got to a point where I was honestly just so tired. And I started questioning things even more. I started questioning what does normal even mean? And who gets to determine which parts of my identity are socially acceptable and which parts are not? I also started to see that although some of my differences because of my disabilities resulted in barriers, some of my differences were actually my strengths. You see, I see the world in absolute beauty. I see patterns and colors and I have an empathy that most people could only dream of. I feel things deeply and passionately and when I set my mind to something there is nothing that will stop me. But those are my strengths and they were my strengths because of my disabilities. And I started to see that Although sometimes my disability meant that I was different from others and they could do things that I couldn't, sometimes it meant that I could do things that others couldn't. I decided to take a very brave step. I ticked that I do actually have a disability box. And this in turn opened up my world to the endless possibility of accessibility. And this in turn removed a large portion of my barriers. I started sharing my stories with others and hearing the stories of my peers around me. I started to see how all people with all disabilities seem to have this common thread, this common understanding. You see, working with people and children with disabilities has taught me three very important things that I would love to share with you today. Now, because I'm creative and visual, I want you to picture your body to remember these three points. Think, speak, and do. Think. Having a disability doesn't always mean you're disabled. Now, you've heard me say that a couple of times already, but what does that actually mean? Having a disability or impairment is a medical diagnosis saying that something isn't working the way that it typically should. In disability studies, this is known as the medical model of disabilities and often views disabilities as something that needs to be cured or fixed. In my case, it was a school that was not willing to adjust its teaching and learning styles to accommodate me when all I really needed was access to technology in the classroom and for my exams. Being disabled, on the other hand, is societal barriers that are placed around us that prevent people with disabilities from enjoying life to the fullest on an equitable basis. In disability studies, this is known as the social model of disabilities. And this views disabilities in a different way and doesn't view disabilities or the person with a disability as something that needs to change, but rather society as the element that needs to change. Having access to ramps, sign language interpreters and all these things that I've mentioned, this is what we need to achieve. You see, I have deaf friends that cannot go and watch movies or go to events or just enjoy life on a normal basis because they are not able to have access to sign language interpreters at events or subtitles at movies, both at home or at cinemas. And it's a very simple solution. And we saw it in COVID-19 with our family meetings. Our presidential addresses had South African Sign Language interpreters available. And this meant that there was access of information to the deaf communities of South Africa. I also have a blind friend who cannot use public transport, who is often refused access into restaurants or shops because he has a guide dog preventing him from being able to use the same resources and access the same places that people who are sighted can access is pure ableism and prevents him from being able to enjoy life to the fullest. We need to work together to make sure that our society is accessible and inclusive of people with disabilities. 
Probably the biggest barrier that we need to address is actually our language. Using terms like deaf and dumb, hearing impaired, visually impaired, midget, wheelchair bound, all of these terms just reignites those fears that people with disabilities carry on a daily basis and prevents them from feeling included and feeling accepted into society. Saying things like, oh my word, I'm so OCD, or you are such a retard, just reinforces these stereotypes that reinforces the segregation that we are trying to break. And this brings me to my second point, speak. Learn when to speak up and when not to. Include people with disabilities into your everyday life. You can do this through reading disability inclusive books by yourself or with your children or watching TV shows on your favorite TV channel with people with actual disabilities in it. Include people with actual disabilities into your marketing campaigns. But please, whatever you do, do not get a person without a disability to act like they have one for the sake of this. The equivalent of this is if we look at theatre, we had men dressing up like women or painting themselves black because theatre was not gender inclusive or racially inclusive. This is the equivalent with disabilities and it's not a trap that you want to fall into. Include people with disabilities into the decision making process of it all. Ask them. What are the right things to do? What are the right things to say here? And everybody might have a different opinion and that is absolutely okay. Be there to listen. And remember, don't speak for the disability community or the disabled community, but speak with people with disabilities. And this brings me to my very last point. Do, do inclusion. It's really that simple including children and adults with disabilities into your everyday life breaks down those stereotypes that reinforces the segregation. Inclusion isn't a new idea. It's a goal we've been working to for a very long time and inclusion isn't only limited to disabilities. Just think of racial inclusion, gender inclusion, LGBTQI plus inclusion and the list goes on. Although all of our journeys might be different, our goal is the same. So don't be afraid of that disability box. Tick it with pride. It isn't a swear word, I promise. We all need to work together to change this word and to change this language and to bring light that disabled is not a swear word. And if you see somebody ticking that box, Remember, think. Disability does not always mean disabled and ensure that you are not disabling that person with a disability. And speak. Speak with people with disabilities, not for them. And lastly, do. Do inclusion.